A lack of reliable information from Russia has made covering the invasion of Ukraine a lot tougher for reporters worldwide. Associated Press journalists are documenting military activity across Ukraine where disinformation is spiking during the Russian invasion. With social media amplifying a torrent of military claims and counterclaims, determining exactly what is happening can be difficult. The Ukrainian government is asking the public to follow and promote information from verified sources. With us to discuss disinformation, misinformation and bad information is Mr. Marcus Kolga, founder of disinfowatch.org. Sir, welcome to Forum Daily. Thank you so much for having me on. So let's start with a quick overview of how disinformation is impacting the situation overall within Ukraine. Well, the Russian government has been engaging in an intense information uh, campaign of information warfare against Ukraine for the past number of years, even going back to 2014. But that's only intensified over the past uh, uh, five to six months. Um, some of these narratives uh, are intended, most of these narratives, in fact, are intended to delegitimize the government. Um, uh, there are claims that the, uh, the government is run by a Nazi militia. Um, that it's it, 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 that Ukraine itself isn't an actual legitimate country. That Ukrainian isn't isn't a language. Uh, the country, of course, is democratically elected. It's run by a, a Jewish president, um, and so all of these fabrications are intended to, quite frankly, um, erode uh, Western support for Ukraine and to uh, intensify anger in the in the Russian people when Russian government propaganda is faced towards them to generate anger and support for Russian aggression towards Ukraine. Um, and the the levels of misinformation and disinformation that we're seeing right now in this conflict are unlike anything that we've seen before. Russia is throwing uh, everything it has at uh, Ukraine right now um, and it's distorting uh, or its efforts to distort uh, perceptions of the conflict and of Ukraine are uh, thankfully proving to be rather unsuccessful, at least in the West right now. Well, taking into consideration this constant coverage of the invasion of Ukraine, how can viewers sort fact from fiction? That is a very good question. I mean, there are limited sources of information right now coming out of Ukraine. Uh, a lot of Western journalists have left or they've moved to the West. So images from the conflict itself are often coming from social media feeds of of resistance fighters, of the army on the ground. And so making sure that we know what is true and what is, is false is, um, is very important. Um, you know, of course, Canadians should be following uh, primarily mainstream media, uh, these are the BBC, CNN, um, Canadian outlets. The Globe and Mail is exceptionally good. Their journalists, uh, Mark McKinnon is probably one of the best in the world. Nathan Vandercliff as well. They're uh, in Ukraine right now, so viewers can uh, can look to the Globe and Mail as a source. Uh, Radio Free Europe, uh, Liberty is also an excellent excellent source. And if you're looking for on the ground uh, content of videos, photographs, you can go to the uh, of course the uh, the Ukrainian Foreign Ministry. Uh, there's also an online service called Nexta. This is a, uh, a service that started in Belarus during the, the uh, uprisings there a year and a half ago. Um, Nexta is a very good source for, uh, for photos, live video coming from, from the conflict zones and specifically Kharkiv at, at this hour right now. And you mentioned Russia has long been connected to disinformation campaigns over for, for over 10 years now. So uh, is there a recognizable pattern that they use in these disinformation campaigns? Well, I mean, absolutely. Uh, they uh, often uh, there's a kernel of truth that is taken, and then it's that gets completely uh, distorted. So, in the Ukrainian case, um, you know, there's there are problems, uh, just as there are in every single European nation, right in here in Canada as well, with uh, far right movements. They've taken these small fringe movements and turned it into a problem. And as I mentioned earlier. Um, the Russian state media is suggesting that the Ukrainian government is run by a Nazi militia. Um, that Those sorts of narratives get amplified on Russian state media, on platforms like RT, on other conspiracy theory websites. Um, in the very worst cases, uh, these narratives get uh, amplified by members of parliament. And in fact, there was a, a Winnipeg federal member of parliament, a Canadian member of parliament, just uh, three weeks ago, um, or two weeks ago, rather, uh, when Canada announced that it would be sending a, a $120 million loan to Ukraine, um, this member of parliament tweeted that, that she objected to money being sent to a Ukrainian government that is run by neo-Nazi militia. So there you have it. You have 
uh, Russian state media being laundered through state media platforms, various other platforms, and arriving on social media where it's tweeted by a member of parliament. That's the sign of a successful campaign, but uh, thankfully she's, uh, she's retracted that statement since then. All right, Mr. Kolga, thank you again for your insight into this on social, on social media and around the world, sir. Thank you. Anytime. Thanks for having me on. We'll be right back. <laughs>